Hey everybody, this is Ainsley Heilick here. I'm going to go over what I did to create this digital artwork. This is a Vanitas, which is like basically a memento mori still life that shows about the fragility and the ephemeral nature of life and its earthly pleasures and that everything is temporary, so don't hold anything too precious. So I had given myself a very specific method that I wanted to work through to do this. So as you see my underpainting here, you could see the golden ratio. And I had a lot of emblems to work with here or symbols to work with and how to make them fit together in a way that looks attractive was definitely the first challenge. So you can see me sketching away here, kind of trying to work out my composition. And then I start plopping in my photographic references as I generally do with uh, my art processes to come up with a overall composition and then kind of photo bash it together and then overpaint. So I, there you go, you can see me, I use my actual hand for that. So that's my hand right there. And by using the golden ratio as the basic eye movement through the piece, that, that spiral, I was able to give a roadmap for the eye to follow because if you're an odd fellow you know that all of these symbols come in a specific order and so I wanted to make sure the viewer was able to follow the order that you're supposed to big air quote read the image with uh, so here I am and working on the pedestal holding the skull and the three links there and uh, Something that was also a challenge with this is the program I used on my iPad Procreate. It usually gives you a ton of layers to work in, but I made this file the largest file size I could for large scale reproduction purposes. And that challenge gave me only, I think I had three working layers to actually paint on. So I was really able to use a painter's approach to this, which was a little new to me because I feel like painting is probably one of my weaker art skills. I am a tattoo artist by trade, and so I come from more of a drawing background, which is different than painting. But I'm trying to, in my old age, <laughs> trying to do some catch up and learn how to do things better. So that's part of the assignment was to just really just challenge myself to create a cohesive, complex image and use a very painterly approach. And I definitely think I'll be doing some more of these in the future. So right now I'm working on, in the background there, Thomas Wildey, the, the man responsible for bringing Odd Fellowship to America. And so he's overseeing everything there. And we've got the uh, All Seeing Eye. So you can kind of see that background layer where I have just a very, very loose blocked in color just to kind of create light and dark. And then kind of working my way through one object at a time, blocking everything in. So the outline layer you see there, that is, that's getting constantly turned on and off. That is a separate layer that I had that I was able to keep on top of everything. It was almost like a transparency, so that way I can stay within the lines within reason. And then once I didn't need it anymore, when I was doing the detail work, I can just eliminate it and get rid of it. And then you keep seeing me uh, turning those light rays, those light beams coming out of the all-seeing eye there. I keep turning those on and off too because I was trying to be very aware of where those light beams were hitting and how they were interacting with the objects where they hit. So the uh, blade on the scythe there and the light on the golden frame, you could see where there's brighter areas where light is catching the raised up bits and more shadowed area where the light beam isn't directly hitting. So that was a kind of a new thing for me as well to try to keep in mind very specific lighting effects. So I, I really tried to throw everything at the wall on this one <laughs> that I was not used to doing just to really, really force myself to, to try. And another thing, I was using a very specific uh, palette on this to try to keep it all looking very consistent. Um, that's one thing I really do like about the older paintings um, from, you know, like the 15, 1400s, 1500s, 1600s, 1700s. They all had a very, kind of a very brownish sort of look to it. 
And I wanted to try to capture some of that brown look, but also I wanted it to be very poppy um, because of my own artwork. If you ever see any of my tattoos or anything, it's very, um, very high chroma, very, very primary color, bright, bright, bright. I like to make everything look very bright and dramatic and theatrical or cinematic. So that does carry over with this a little bit. Um, see I'm starting to put some extra little symbols in here I've got the roses and the leaves um, which if you've been through the initiation you'll understand what that reference is from so that was items that definitely fit in with the symbol symbolism of the vanitas and um, working on the fancy fancy curtain here that the heart and hand is pulling aside and allowing the viewer to gaze upon this room of, of treasures But you can see me like I definitely once I get everything blocked in, I start jumping around a lot because I start getting bored or distracted and it'll be like one evening. I'm just going to work on this little bit here and then another time I'm going to work on this little bit here just to keep my own self interested in what I'm doing. You can see me turning them light, the light leaks back on and off and on and off trying to make sure I have my light source is correct and now you can see me kind of sketching in some little additional items that I wanted to kind of fill out the scene with so I've got a kind of a burnout candle here that is definitely a very vanitas heavy image there things like bubbles uh, fly on fruit the burnout candle with the smoke uh, things like that are all very symbolic items I wanted to include to try to give it sort of a little bit of emotion and, and emotion and motion if that makes sense so um the leaves are kind of blowing around in the room like there was the like the curtain being swept back created like a big old gust of wind and everything's just kind of blowing around in there and uh, it mo keeps the eye moving around the picture as well you can see me turning on and off different layers to make sure everything's looking okay double check and then start chipping away at the lettering on this on this banner that is hanging off my my finger there and then had a little spot that I felt like needed a little extra something so I put a uh, just a regular third degree member collar there and a combination collar for um, I believe that's a past grand past chief patriarch collar there so it's a combination collar and I'm not quite sure where I'm working at okay now we got zoom back in so I'm starting to put in some of the secondary reflections after you know just get that general block in of the golden tones and then you gotta put the darker tones in and the lighter tones in to make everything look round and shiny and reflective and catching light and at this point I definitely think I started kind of jumping around and working on details here and there and everywhere and I logged over 56 hours on procreate on this piece and I definitely feel like I could have easily doubled that had I had the mental fortitude for it however <laughs> that is the one thing that was fighting me the whole time was the will to keep pushing on to work it towards a better completion from where it was previously because there's definitely points where I'm like okay I'm done with this I'm done with this I'm over it I'm just done and then I was like no no I gotta gotta keep working on it. I gotta keep chipping away at this and making it a little bit better and refining it and refining it and yeah so not quite sure where I'm at right now working around in this something's getting worked on but yeah you'll you'll s hopefully start seeing something soon happening here where it looks like I'm doing something, but yeah, I can't quite make out what's happening right now with the, but we'll, we'll, we'll pick it up in a second. But yeah, so there's a lot of, there's a lot going on in here with the light and everything. And, um, so yeah, oh, there goes the lights again. Okay. So you can see me, I'm over working on that curtain now and just kind of 
just noodling about at this point, I guess. Okay, see me, we're working on the fringe on the banner now. I cheated a little bit and used the uh, liquify tool to nitpick the kind of blowing effect on that banner there. So that's something that you couldn't do in real life on canvas with paint, but it worked out for my situation. And then you see me going back and adding some highlight to the lettering where the light will be catching it and adding a little bit of kind of dynamic light and shade to the, the banner where it looks like the curve of the blown parts catching the light a little bit more. So it's a lot of things I was trying to pay better attention to than what I normally do on an object that I can't quite ever zoom in far enough with, but that's the one nice thing about working on the iPad is I could really zoom in and get in there when I'm working on it to try to make everything look either as defined or as loose as I want it to. So to talk about the symbols a little bit that you were going to see in here, um, so with the Odd Fellows, there are three degrees for the Odd Fellow Lodge, and that is not including the initiatory. So technically there are four, but we only say there are three because the initiatory does not technically count as a degree. It is an initiation. It is a making. And so the initiatory degree symbols are... Oh, you can see me dropping in. Finally figured out what I was going to do with that window situation. You can see me using that golden ratio again to figure out the placement of those stars to make sure everything's in alignment. So, yeah, back to the um, the for the initiatory degree. The symbols are the all-seeing eye, the skull and crossbones, the three links, and the scythe. So those are all there. And then as you kind of loop around, you get to the first degree symbols, which are the bundle of sticks, the quiver, and the um, the bow and the arrows. Then you go to the second degree symbols. You get the axe, the um, heart and hand, the arc, and I think I had to end up putting the globe a little bit towards the front there because I just just mostly for composition's sake. And then you get to the the third degree, which is the hourglass, the coffin, the um, sword and scale there. No, it really land those lights in. And so when I put some other items in there, like so, oh yeah, and the Bible, forgot about the Bible. So technically the Bible is underneath that book with the ribbon marking the page and the book with the ribbon marking the page I put some text in it and if you look really close you can actually read it and what it is is it is the past grand's charge from the initiatory degree and then other little symbols I threw in there um, on the scales. I decided to put a feather just kind of floating down, and that is a reference to the um, Egyptian Book of the Dead, where was it Osiris who would weigh a heart against a feather? Somebody would weigh your heart against a feather to determine if you were making it into the great beyond. And yeah, there it is. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching my process and I'll definitely be making some more Oddfellows paintings in this manner because it definitely seems like a niche that I would enjoy filling. And if you want to purchase copies of this, you can purchase it, purchase it from my Zazzle store. I will have it linked in the description. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching and Go check it out on Zazzle, and if you want to learn more about the Oddfellows, uh, just uh, shoot me a question. Have a good one.